Hey guys, what's up? Ross Um, I've been sick all week. Um, it's that time of year where the weather turns to evil, uh, and uh, all frogs must go down into the earth and die. Uh, and that's me. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm dying. Anyway, um, thoughts on Jermaine Greer. Um, Jermaine Greer is a very well-known, maybe not so much in the U.S., um, individual liberty feminist. Much of her work appears to be based around the idea of individual women's liberation. Um, and sort of, she's always been about sort of the philosophy of individual accomplishment and how that could apply to women. She's an older kind of feminist. Um, sort of feminist that it would be capable of doing everything as a woman um, and a little bit more too and never really uh, wanting anything other than the opportunity to uh, to be successful in life just the opportunity you know she seemed like the sort of woman who was always willing to work for what she needed um, and that is Jermaine's whole thing, and that's uh, sort of the archetype of a lot of sort of older feminists. She's very much, she's not the same as Christina Hoff Summers, but she'd be in a similar camp. I don't think she specifically aligned herself against um, victim feminism. Uh, many people will remember that she sat beside Anita Sarkeesian uh, during the... Um, feminist conference in Australia uh, where Anita, Anita had to read from A4 papers a pre-prepared statement because Anita is incapable um, of riffing on the fly about something she's quote-unquote highly educated in. So that was interesting. But that's who Jermaine Greer is um, and obviously at this point most people have probably seen the video uh, from the BBC where Jermaine basically comes out as a trans exclusionary feminist. The common term is trans exclusionary radical feminist but she's a trans exclusionary feminist and um, I have watched people who I know on Facebook and in groups um, immediately set fire to the bitch just fucking thrown her straight under the bus for uh, her comments on trans women um, and I think I think a lot of people don't realize that there is a fist fight between a certain subsection of uh, feminism and um, transgenderism where um, this specific group of radical feminists believes that um, trans individuals can never be women because they've never experienced life under the patriarchy from birth in the same way that women have and a lot of them see it as just another man entering um, what was previously a female safe space now in fairness the sorts of people who are radical feminists are radical trans exclusionary feminists are pieces of shit anyway so, I mean, that's my opinion. Um, I think the trans people go through enough struggle in their lives. Uh, they're not accepted anywhere. And for um, feminism to, a specific brand of feminism to kick them to the side, um, yeah, that's kind of shitty. However, the devil's advocate that I am, I can kind of see the point of a trans exclusionary radical feminist in the sense that I've seen it, the argument made many times that when a man transitions into a woman, he very rarely um, picks up any archetype other than the archetype that he believes uh, womanhood is uh, and the female gender role is, which is very much, you know, dresses and, you know, hyper femininity, um, which is an understandable complaint from the perspective of. Um, radical feminists who are working very hard to restructure the female gender role. So that's interesting. Um, 
What do I think about it? Um, I think Jermaine Greer shouldn't have said that. Uh, I think she's smarter than that. Uh, I think it's kind of she. I mean, she probably doesn't have time to educate herself on all of the minutia of what's happening online and on the internet with all this fucking identity politics bullshit. But um, yeah. I think she probably should have thought that one through a bit more. Um, but as she sort of said as well, she's 74 years of age now. She doesn't really give a shit about uh, whether or not she gets disinvited to college campuses. Uh, and I can't blame her for that either. Um, she wants to have an opinion on something that's fine. And I would say as well to... and like Again, I don't think she was right to say the things that she said. But she did caveat it quite heavily in the sense that she said, look, these are my opinions. If somebody wants to do whatever they want to do with their lives, she has no power to stop them and really wouldn't want them stopped. Um, but I would say to people who are now trying to throw all of Jermaine Greer's work out the window just because she said one transphobic potential okay, I'm not even going to say potentially transphobic. She made a, tra a transphobic statement. Um, to throw out the entire body of her work out the window um, would be quite silly. Um, in the same regard that uh, a lot of people like Ender's Game, but uh, don't fucking get involved in Orson Scott Card's personal politics because he's a piece of shit. So what else? Um, I saw Spectre at the weekend. Um, meh, really. I'm not the world's biggest James Bond fan. Um, I think he's all right. I think James Bond is okay. But uh, I'm not the biggest James Bond fan. Um, I've been playing Warframe. Uh, well, I, I've been meaning to. I've been playing a little bit of it. Um, it's all right. It's actually worth a look. Um, what else? I know I'm going, um, yeah, sick as a dog. Sick as a fucking pirate here. Um, uh, the South by Southwest shit, where uh, the South by Southwest um, panels on video gaming and Gamergate have been uh, stopped. They've been cancelled because um, there's been a threat against, um, there's been threats of violence against the panel. Um, and it hasn't taken very long for the usual suspects like Jezebel and, um, you know, you could list them off to start blaming Gamergate for it. Um, I was looking on the Gamergate boards on 8chan and checking the Gamergate feed on Twitter while it was going on, um, and there was no sentiment about um, South by Southwest's panel on Gamergate being negative. There were it, there was no uh, there didn't seem to be any major hatred for it. It was interesting that there was going to be a conversation about it. Um, but the minute that it happened, obviously it was Gamergate's fault, according to the usual suspects. And it was like, well, there was going to be a Gamergate panel. The car, there was going to be a conversation about Gamergate. Why would Gamergate attack its own panel? You're fucking retarded. It's, it's not, you know, you don't even, you don't even, it's, it's like this shit over the Patreon hack. You know, somebody attacked Patreon. Uh, clearly it was Gamergate. You know, like, so it's like, it's almost like the, somebody kicks over a fucking, uh, a, a cart full of dates in uh, Afghanistan. Oh, ISIS did it. Do you know what I mean? I'm not defending ISIS. I'm just saying that once you've created a boogeyman, um, you have to blame them now for everything, apparently. You know, Gamergate had nothing to do with the Patreon hack, but everyone still sat there and went, up oh, fucking Gamergate. Fucking Gamergate. So, <clears throat> what can you say? Um, it's unfortunate that the Southwest, South by Southwest panel is not going to happen. See, that's the thing as well. Is anytime somebody, anytime Gamergate actually tries to have sort of a conversation in a, a non biased atmosphere, people lose their fucking mind. Because the worst case scenario is that Gamergate actually comes out and says something that makes some degree of sense. Uh, and it isn't about harassing women or something ridiculous like that. 
Um, and then F1 goes, oh, fuck. You know, any attempt to give Gamergate any form of credibility or allow Gamergate to have a conversation about itself outside of its own echo chambers um, gets threatened. Um, it gets threatened and then blamed on Gamergate for, for getting threatened, which is, you know, ironic. It's like, Gamergate isn't so destructive that it can't have a conversation about itself with itself. I don't know. It seems fucking stupid. Anyway, that seems to be all that happened over the last couple of days. Uh, I'm going to continue to die <laughs> with my cold. Uh, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, pick up more seriously uh, down the line. So that's it for now. I'm Ross Dunn. Like, comment and subscribe. I am the Batman. Thank you.